Let's let's do uh, one more. Um, this one I think we're gonna spend a little bit more time on, um, but we're gonna have to set up something differently. Um, I want to show you how we can start to apply this to surfaces in an architectural condition. We're gonna start moving that way. So let's create a surface um, here in perspective. Um, it doesn't really matter how perfect it is, but just try to get it to be roughly square, something like that. Um, and you'll, you'll find that I like to work in perspective. Um, you guys can work in top view and stuff. It doesn't really matter all that much. Um, it's up to you and your preference. So down here, um, let's go to, let's see, surface, utility, and let's go to divide surface. I think this is what I want. So uh, it's going to ask us for the surface to divide, and then it's going to ask us for a U and a V count. Do you guys remember how to reference a surface? From the params, yeah, from the params node. Uh, that says surface. Yes, absolutely. Right click, go to set one surface, and then go to Rhino, and it'll show up. So right click on that object. Yes. Oh, I want to do a quick, uh, actually, that, 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 that. Yeah. All right. You guys see the difference between these two? What's the difference? Yeah, the color, right? Do you guys remember what that meant? Yeah, so one, one surface is facing up, the other surface is facing down. So um, we're gonna get into that at some point, but I just wanna point that out to you that it has everything to do with how you create the geometry. Um, so let me go back real quick. This is kind of a sidebar, but um, I'm gonna do one surface. The way I did it at first was I went you know, up here and I went clockwise like that. And then the other one, Hit enter and I went counterclockwise like that. So the first surface I said set and I placed it on there and it turned up the dark red. Then the second surface set it, put it there and it turns up bright red. So whether it was created counterclockwise or clockwise, I think I did that oriented properly for you, right? Um, <laughs> And then, so anyway, that is what defines which direction the surface is, like which side is the positive side. Um, anyway, since I, it doesn't matter to this exercise, I'll just use this one. Um, plug that into surface divide, and it will divide it for you into, um, into points. So this was under surface utility. Pretty easy, right? So um, I don't really need this geometry on. I'm going to hide it. I also don't need to see the original surface, so I'm going to turn that off. Also, I'm going to turn off all this. So get to a point where you've got um, your point grid just hanging out there in space, and then we'll continue on. All right, I'm going to get moving. Um, so. Don't worry so much about the number of subdivisions. If you want to play around with that, that's fine. Um, but I just want to show you the logic of what we're doing. Um, so we're now going to take that dispatch tool and we're going to create a test that's going to figure out whether or not something is compliant with a certain rule set. And then it's going to create the pattern for us. Okay. So um, we have a set of points that currently is um, broken up into a bunch of um, lists right it's a list of lists which when we're trying to do like an operation on an entire grid generally not that great of an idea so um let's right click and just flatten that right off the bat so now it's going to read as a solid list of all these points <clears throat> um, the other thing we're going to do is bring in dispatch so let's go back to set list and we're going to pull in dispatch Sets list. So now what this is going to ask us for is the list to filter and then the um, pattern that we're going to be filtering it by. 
So uh, let's plug in the list, which is the points. And then the pattern is something that's going to be a little different. Um, so we're going to actually try and test whether or not these points are inside of a curve. And then we're going to select only those points and create a pattern for them. So um, let's go to um, a control point curve. And let's just draw some sort of pattern in here. And it doesn't matter if it goes outside. That's fine. Something like that. Anytime we do that, uh, do that in Rhino, what do we have to do? We have to set it or reference it, as, as I like to describe it. We reference it using a param. So I'm going to go to param, geometry, curve. And I'm going to say set one curve and reference that curve. Um, curve is up here. Click it there. Drop it in. Right click. Set one curve. Then select the curve to reference. Okay. So you won't be able to guess the tool that you're going to use. Um, if you flipped around a bunch of different menus, maybe you'd find something that's either the right tool or not. Um, but if you go to curve and analysis, um, there are two tools down the bottom here that are pretty interesting. It asks, uh, it says point in curve and point in curves, plural. Um, so I think, I, I think we want point in curve singular, but it says test a point for closed curve containment. Um, so we're going to drop that in here. Uh, it's going to have the um, point or list of points, right? Anytime it says like singular point, you can always assume, generally always assume that it will run the operation on multiple items as well. Um, and then it's gonna ask you for a boundary region or curve. So um, we're gonna put that in here, we're gonna put this in here and take a look at the list that it gives us. So the R value is saying point region relationship, click on that. And we've got a set of zeros, ones and twos. So when you read the description, it says um, point region relationship uh, zero equals outside, one equals coincident, which I'm actually extremely shocked that I got something that's coincident because that's very rare. Um, and two is inside. So how the heck did I get a one? That's like mm -hmm. super rare. That's wild. Um, so I don't know if you realize like how rare that is, but it's like, I have my curve had to hit something exactly like to to like eight decimal places for that to get a one. That's like mind boggling. Um, the hole in the one, yeah. yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Living the dream. Um, okay, so so anyway, we've got our list. It's got zeros and twos. Um, so we're gonna take that list and we're gonna create a logic test that's going to create it um, as zeros and ones essentially. Um, so we're going to actually do that under, this is the first time we're using this, but we're going to go to math and operations and um, we're going to use larger than. Oh, sorry. This was under point analysis. <coughs> this is math operators. Okay, so what larger than is going to do is um, it's going to basically test whether or not the list that's being fed to it is larger than or less than the value that we plug in. So what's cool about this being set up in three values is you have a zero, you have a one, and you have a two. But we're only interested in the zero and the two. So that one is something that we can test against. So we're gonna plug the value into A we're going to put another little mini panel I like to copy a lot sorry um, there and we're going to make that a one and then take a look at the output list so the output list is going to read
Um, it's going to read false, 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 true, false, 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 and that's that crazy um, number one. But um, we have 121, 121. That actually shouldn't be 121 in there. Something seems a little funky. False, false, false. True and the twos. There we go. Um, so we've got all these trues that are showing up down the bottom. Okay. So um, that is our sift. That's that's essentially our sifting or, or dispatching pattern, right? That's our Boolean pattern. So when we plug that into um, the p value, it's going to basically filter that list so that we only have the 66 points that are outside, and then we have the 66 points that are inside, or vice versa. I forget exactly. But let's go to um, let's just drop a point in here and test it. So when I drop that in and I click this, we've got all the points that are inside the curve and all the points that are outside the curve. Pretty cool stuff, right? How would you use this? Anybody? No, 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 not like, not like pragmatically, like how you use, use, use it, but like, how would you use this in architecture? How would you use it in design? Sure, yeah, you could use it as like a negative space, positive space thing, but with like perforation patterns, you could do that, right? Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, so let's let's take it a step further. I want to show you what the result is meant to be. Um, I'm going to copy these polygons, copy and paste them down. Um, so we've got list A that goes up here, and list B that goes down there. You can get rid of this guy. Um, and let's turn these on. Boom. So um, I'm going to turn, let's hide that. Let's turn all these off. Oh, wait, actually, I can't hide that. Show, hide this one. OK, so now we've got a pattern that actually is pretty cool. Let me make it a little bit more drastic triangles. All right, so um, our pattern now shows hexagons inside the circle and triangles outside of the circle. So where's that one that was coincident? Not showing now. Normally that should have been oh, because it reads to it reads to match one of the sets. Um, anyway, so uh, what's cool about this is that now we can revolve this thing, and the pattern will adjust with it. Pretty powerful stuff, right? Is that crazy? The answer is yes. <laughs> as much as you realize or don't realize it yet, this is really powerful stuff. All right. Handles everything that's inside of it now. Yep. Wow. Absolutely. So um, we're going to set up sort of like an architectural apparatus, and we're going to continue the conversation that I was showing you before about like setting up. We're going to kind of semi introduce more accurate assemblies in a moment. Um, but uh, I want to show you how you can apply this kind of logic to something that is purely architectural as well. Right. So um, let's take. Let's take a 10 minute break. So at like five after, we'll go into the next segment. Uh, points analysis.